This is a lucky bag that my partner got from a live stream shopping event. We won a palm sized robot vacuum cleaner, but it turned out that the battery doesn't even connect properly. It actually has to be plugged in to work. In China, businesses sometimes use promotional giveaways to attract customers. But these freebies often end up being of very poor quality. As a result, complaints from consumers are on the rise. Take a look at this backpack that came as a free gift with a tablet. It feels just like it's made of paper. Look at this. It appears brand new, hasn't been exposed to rain or sun, but it tears apart with just a light pull. You don't even have to use much force. Can sellers stop using these buy one get one free, give us useless junk? Look at this, tweezers and eyelash glue. I don't even want to start on the eyelash glue because I'm too scared to put it anywhere near my eyes. But these tweezers are as flimsy as paper, they can't grip anything properly and the edges are sharp enough to cut my hand. And the seller just love giving out these beauty sponges. Mine is decent, but I've received one so hard that you could use them as a foot massage ball. There are also these round, small round makeup mirrors and and cheap hand creams. Honestly, I've thrown all of them away. Sometimes when I buy press on nails, they always include these cheap little clips. To be honest, I'd rather they just cut a few yuan off the price. And if they can't do that, at least give us something useful. If I'm buying press on nails, send me some jelly glue. If I'm buying makeup, throw in some samples. What's the point of this stuff? I think giving out these things just for the sake of it is completely unnecessary and not eco-friendly. Seeing all this junk just annoys me. Seriously, I've had enough. I bought a pair of earphones online, and when the package arrived, I found a bunch of freebies inside. Besides a humidifier and a power bank, the most surprising gift was a robot vacuum. Let's take a closer look at it. It's not too heavy, and it looks pretty standard. Nothing too fancy. I've set it up now, but it doesn't seem to be very smart. Let's test it. One, two, three. Wow, it's quite dirty. Let's see if the vacuum can clean it. Go. Try again. Is this thing supposed to be manual? Oh. I forgot to release its wheels. Let's try it again. This time, I'll add some coffee grounds. The buyer later took a picture of the robot vacuum and searched online, only to find out that this so-called robot was actually just a plastic box priced at 49 yuan, about 6.9 US dollars. This little stool here was a freebie, but I don't think the seller even manufactures it. I've seen tons of these small stools being given away as gifts. They're made from what seems to be concrete molds, which is quite normal. Let's test it. Its density isn't likely to be high, around 0.05 or 0.04, which is not much. Let's peel off the surface and check again. Typically, households wouldn't use this material, but it's quite common for sellers to give it as a freebie. This stool costs around 5 to 6 yuan, approximately 0.7 US dollars. So you can't really expect quality material. It's still usable though. You can see here the recycled material with traces of mud on it. The red coating outside is also recycled. Aside from low quality products like these, there are also complaints from consumers about free gifts that don't match the seller's descriptions at all. One buyer shared their experience from a live stream shopping event where they purchased laundry pods. The seller had promised a rocking horse that a child could sit on as a freebie. However, when it arrived, it was only palm-sized, completely different from what they had imagined. Another woman bought some photography backdrops and decorations online. According to her delivery information, the seller included some decorative ice cubes as a freebie. But when she opened the package, she was completely dumbfounded. The focus of this video is the ice cubes. First, there's this white cloth, which is fine, but I keep wondering, where are my ice cubes? Well, here they are. Look at this, just two of them. Is this what they call ice cubes? My goodness, they're tiny. What's the point of giving me this? I'm speechless. Some of these odd freebies may be amusing, but the next example shows how a gift can pose serious health risks. In March, authorities in China discovered a case in Jiangyin, Jiangsu province, where two individuals who had been selling cosmetics for years were found to have added mercury levels tens of thousands of times above the legal limit to samples, marketing it as a quick whitening and spot removal product. They bundled these toxic samples with standard products, labeling them as non-sale items to be given away for free. During inspections, only the legitimate products were tested, not the samples, 
allowing them to evade scrutiny. Within six months, their sales reached over 1 million yuan. According to the cosmetic safety technical specifications, the maximum presumable mercury content in cosmetics is 1 milligram per kilogram. In this case, the mercury content in the samples exceeded this limit by a staggering 43,000 times. High levels of mercury can cause skin allergies, mercury poisoning, weakened immune system, and even harm to the nervous system. These tainted cosmetic samples, applied directly to consumers' faces, pose a serious threat to their health. Some freebies have also led to significant financial losses for consumers. A few days ago, Miss Zhang received a package that included an ad for a promotional gift, urging her to scan a QR code via Alipay. Out of curiosity, she joined an Alipay chat group. In the group, members eagerly shared photos of the gifts they had received, which tempted Miss Zhang to participate. She sent her home address and soon after, she received a package containing a bottle of laundry detergent from a well-known brand. This unexpected gift convinced her that the promotional activity was genuine. However, as she continued to follow the group's activities, Miss Jung was gradually lured into a scam. She clicked on a link, downloaded an app, and registered. Soon, an assistant introduced her to a music promotion campaign. The rules seemed simple. Copy a link, search for it in a music app, and take a screenshot to earn a commission. Miss Jung completed her first task effortlessly and withdrew over 80 yuan as commission. Feeling confident, she decided to upgrade to higher level promotional tasks. But this was exactly the trap set by the scammers. During the second task, when she tried to withdraw her earnings, the system displayed an error claiming a data issue. The assistant then told Miss Zhang she needed to deposit more funds to fix the problem. In an attempt to recover her initial deposit of over 25,000 yuan, Miss Zhang ended up sending a total of 146,500 yuan via ride hauling services. It wasn't until the scammers asked her to send an additional 250,000 yuan that she realized she had been scammed and immediately reported the incident to the police. Authorities later confirmed that Miss Zhang lost over 170,000 yuan through a combination of online deposits and in-person cash delivery. The police are currently working to track down the stolen funds. Why does this type of scam keep happening in China? What does it reveal about society? First, some media outlets have pointed out that while Chinese-made products are often low quality, they are cheap, perfectly catering to businesses that want to run promotions while still making a profit. Cheap cost is a unique phenomenon in China. It was once seen as the original sin of the country's industrial development, an issue that had to be addressed for industrial upgrades. Today, low cost remains the primary competitive strategy in China's internet industry. From e-commerce to in-person businesses, companies continue to rely on subsidies and low prices to attract customers. For instance, Pindodo, a shopping app known for its low prices, quickly gained a foothold in China by capitalizing on its thin profit margins and high sales volume. However, the quality of the products it sells has raised many concerns. A person shared their experience online stating that they had ordered two pairs of full grain leather boots in Pindodo. The product description claimed the boots were full grain leather, but the item received were not as advertised. The user also highlighted another brand named CCE, which is marketed as French. Further investigation revealed CCE was a Chinese trademark, yet still promoted as French on Pindodo. This reveals that the platform caters to budget-conscious consumers, leveraging surplus production and intense competition, leading to aggressive price wars. As the world's manufacturing hub, China has long relied on clearing out surplus stock through low prices, creating a massive demand. Platforms like Taobao, aiming to maintain higher order values, avoid this segment, leaving room for others to fill the gap. Pindodo seized this opportunity, cleverly positioning itself away from competitors like JD.com and Taobao. While some critics dismiss Pindodo's products as cheap, tacky, and uninspired, these same products have found widespread appeal among millions. Simply put, the trend of downgrading consumption is allowing low-quality budget products to slowly dominate the market, hurting companies that invest in building brands and quality. After the pandemic in 2022, brands that symbolize this trend rapidly expanded across China. This also includes e-commerce giants like Xi'an 
and Timu that have disrupted the market with their shockingly low priced but subpar product, aggressively capturing market share worldwide. Reports indicate that domestic manufacturers in many countries are now feeling the impact of this flood of Chinese goods. In response, Indonesia has launched anti-dumping investigations into China's imports of bolts and screws. Argentina is probing China's made elevators. And the UK is scrutinizing Chinese manufactured excavators and e-bikes. However, with low prices often comes a poor shopping experience. As these cheap products sweep across markets, they contribute to job losses globally and intensify human rights concerns in China, prompting Western nations to take countermeasures. As the US presidential election heats up, many Americans are showing their political affiliations by wearing clothing that feature the names or images of their favored candidates. Interestingly, much of this election-themed merchandise is made in China. For example, Timu has sold tens of thousands of Trump and Harris-related items. Baseball caps with the Make America Great Again slogan sell for just a few dollars, a stark contrast to the $40 price tag on Trump's official campaign website. Similarly, Harris-themed shirts on Timu cost less than $10 a fraction of the price on her official store. The massive price difference highlights the challenges the U.S. faces in reducing its reliance on Chinese products. To address this, the U.S. government is attempting to close a trade loophole that allows Chinese companies to ship goods valued under $800 to the U.S. without paying import duties. Ben Waxman, founder of the U.S. clothing brand American Roots, remarked that the influx of products from China and other regions via platforms like Amazon and Etsy is undermining the competitiveness and growth potential of American manufacturers like his. Kim Glass, president of the National Council of Textile Organizations, told Voice of America that two U.S. presidential candidates have vowed to take tougher action against China's predatory trade practices. Yet, it's ironic that their supporters often express their allegiance by purchasing campaign merchandise online, items that are frequently made in China. On the other hand, some people suggest that the trend of including low-quality freebies in purchases reflects a broader mentality among Chinese consumers, one of seizing small bargains. The renowned British philosopher Bertrand Russell, one of the most influential thinkers of the last century, wrote in his book, The Problem of China, that he observed three main character flaws among the Chinese, greed, cowardice, and lack of empathy. While the writer has a high regard for the Chinese people and considers them one of the most admirable nations, he notes that greed is a significant flaw. Due to difficult living conditions and economic hardships, many, apart from a few well-educated individuals, resort to corruption and even crime to gain money. Even politicians struggle to resist bribery. Russell's observation touches on a crucial point. Poverty has been a major factor contributing to the development of greed among Chinese people. According to statistics from the Chinese government, approximately 960 million people, nearly 70% of the population, earn less than 2,000 yuan or about 280 US dollars per month. Meanwhile, 1% of the population controls 90% of the country's wealth, leaving the remaining 999% with just 10%. This stark inequality highlights the extreme wealth gap in China. Professor Xie Tian from the School of Business at the University of South Carolina, Aiken, further illustrates this issue by referencing the Gini coefficient, a metric used to measure wealth distribution. A Gini coefficient of 0 0.9 indicates extreme inequality, while 0 0.5 or higher signifies a large income gap. A score of zero reflects perfect equality. Essentially, the lower the coefficient, the more balanced the wealth distribution. In 2023, China Wealth Report by China International Capital Corporation showed that China's Gini coefficient for wealth was around 0 0.47 in 2022. However, the Credit Suisse Research Institute, using data from the World Inequality Database, estimated it to be at 0 0.76 in 2022, a 28% increase from the year 2000. Some Chinese people have shared their experiences of living through China's planned economy, noting that many people have grown up fearing poverty and hunger. The impact of being raised in an agrarian society is evident in their mindset. If you have land, 
grow crops. If you can work, work extra hours and always have something for your children and grandchildren. This mindset is deeply ingrained into the Chinese people by the Chinese Communist Party.